Hello and welcome to the Cyber One YouTube channel. My name is Ray and in this video, part three of my robot lab, we're going to have a look at some of the sensors that we can use for the, one of the sensors we can use and that's the PIR sensor. So on my webcam view, you can see I have got my Arduino Nano. This is a, a little board I bought very very many years ago now uh, that breaks the pins out so that I can hook them up like a servo uh, DC power supply etc now what I have here is a standard PIR sensor you can buy relatively cheap on eBay or Aliexpress or something of the like and it's connected via three pins One of those is power, one is signal, and one is ground. So the black one in this case is ground, the grey one in it is actually 5 volt, and the white wire is signal. Then on the Arduino, we've got our black wire connected to ground in this end. Power is on the middle terminal, and we've got our signal on the uh, inside one. Uh, on the top and I've connected this to uh, port 7 so these start at 0 so 7 is a good one to choose it's out of the way and it works uh, 1 and 2 are used by the USB so we won't be using those for any of our experimentation so let's start with this one the sensor has two potentiometers and also a mode control jumper we have this set up to send a pulse and it will send a pulse of approximately two seconds the way I have this configured. You can adjust that timing with one of these pots and the other pot is the sensitivity. Once connected to the Arduino, we need to tell my robot lab how to use it or and where it is. So what we're going to do is go to runtime. We're going to call this PIR which stands for Passive Infrared. If we type in PIR in here, you'll see that there is a service for it. And press Enter, click on Start to start the service. You'll see here we've got the PIR service. At the moment, it's not online. We need to tell it which pin we're going to be connecting it to. In this case, it will be 7. And what controller? In this case, it's the Arduino Nano, which we set up in the last video. And then attach. Now, this device can be annoying, triggering all the time. So you can disable it or enable. So we're going to enable it. And you can see it's polling at one hertz. Now, the easiest way to see what's going on here probably should have actually checked that before I started running this recording. The easiest way to check it is in Python. Another way of doing it is through the Nano. What we can do is go to iScope and select D7. And you'll see on the scope, it's not a very good color scheme every time it triggers. Okay, so the green light up there is actually its trigger. So my moving around was setting it off. We can stop it from sensing by disabling it. And we can do all of this through Python as well. 
So let's have a quick look at My Robot Lab. Okay, so in My Robot Lab, let's get rid of that uh, webcam for the moment. All right, so if we go to menu, documentation, and scroll down till we find matrix. And then scroll through this list until we find PIR. Click on the PIR. And that'll bring up the documentation for the PIR. And in here, we have got a little bit of information on how to connect it all up. In this case, they've got it connected to pin two, which will also work. And this is a very old set of documentation. I can tell with that image an example bit of code. So in my robot lab, you can use Python to start it and stop services and also enable, disable. You can also create your own functions or features in Python and create callbacks to those. So in this code, we've got a function defined publish sense, which prints human detected. We add PIR add listener. Uh, the function or what we're looking for is called publish sense and the Python name is publish sense. So every time that happens, it will uh, call that routine and we can print that the human was detected. All right, there, there is more information in Java doc. So if we follow up, we go up to the Java doc links and follow it. Okay, so in the Java doc links, you can see here that we have got a list of the functions that can be, or methods that can be called. So we have disable and enable. And we have the publish sense builder and on pin data. So not a great deal. We can change the rate at which you're scanning. By default, it scans at one hertz. So we can actually change that to scan more frequently. Although one hertz seems to be plenty. I have actually set this so that it will trigger within two seconds. So or trigger for two seconds. So at one hertz, it will see it. And you don't, the more often you scan, the more processing power you're using for it. And this is only a very simple sensor. So one hertz works quite well. Okay, that'll do for this video. If you like these videos, don't forget to click on like, subscribe, ring that notification bell so you're notified when other videos come out. It's also a form of support that helps the channel a great deal and costs you absolutely nothing. If you'd like to support the channel further, I do have a Patreon account and you can join my VIPs, Go Lucky and Lorenz Berger, as well as my Builder Patreon, El Morales 45. You'll find a link in the description below. I also have a Discord channel. You can talk to either Fred or myself or one of the other members of our growing community. You'll find a link in the description below. And we'll see you in the next video.